CCC family, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet, and today we're going to learn how to make these really cool crochet wind spinners. I'm sure you're seeing a lot of videos and stuff on crochet, crochet groups for these. They're a lot of fun. They're easy to make. They're great to personalize and make your own pattern out of them. You can do wonderful things with them. There are a couple tricks to them though, so I'm going to talk about that today. And yeah, so it's just great fun. This is a pattern that's been around for a long, long time. And actually, um, I think it was my grandmother um, used to use this pattern to actually make scarves. So that's something to think about as well. You just make it, of course, much longer than a wind spinner. Um, and you can do even more rows to it and it would make a gorgeous, twisty, beautiful scarf. So um, yeah, great fun. And so let's get into the materials. Okay, so the first thing I wanna ask you is to please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notify me bell below. And if you can share this to any crochet groups or friends, that helps a whole bunch and I really appreciate it. Okay, so for this project today, you're going to need a, a four millimeter hook. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a darning needle and I am going to be using two sizes of darning needles. I'm gonna use a very large one and then I'm gonna use a very small one. Now that's because I wanna show you how to do these beautiful little ends with the sequins, okay? Which leads me to my next material on here and that's these wonderful sequins that I got at Dollar Tree. It came with gold, green, and this orange color which I used on a Halloween one which will be another video. Um, so, and these just go right through the yarn into, um, that small darning needle and they just thread right on to this. Then you'll see that I have some cute little butterflies hanging from here. I will put in the description box on how to make these. They could either be butterflies or flowers, whatever. Uh, however you perceive them is whatever you can make them as. But for this purpose, they were butterflies, but I will leave in the description, description box below. I have another video on how to make these. Um, I also have these on this one, these butterflies, and these are my Tunisian crochet butterflies, and um, they will be in the description box below as well. These are hanging outside and got a tiny bit wet, so this is still a little damp, and they will go right back outside, but I brought them in for purposes of this video. And by the way, they do spin beautifully with a little bit of wind. Um, and so, but what you're seeing here is you've got the actual, um, spinner and then below I've made a tassel. I've cut that off, put sequins on them, and then still have some hanging along to attach my butterflies. So I'm going to show you how to do all of this. I'm going to show you how to do the ridging around here that, um, makes it look all, uh, doily like if you want to add that. Um, I'll show you how that you don't have to. As you can see, this one looks quite a bit bigger and that's because there's a bigger yarn used here than on this one, so that really makes a difference. Um, and then on this one is a very small yarn and this is a very long one. So what I can tell you is that the longer they are, they're not, they don't keep their shape as well. They're still beautiful, but they just don't keep their shape as well as these. Also, this is a very soft yarn that I used for this one. It's like a, it, it was a, a weight four yarn, but it was um, an ombre, I think by Lion Brand or something. So it's just very, very soft. This is yarn from Michael's, just your basic yarn. I think it's, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it. Anyways, it's their basic yarn and it's like Red Heart. It's got a lot of fragility to it and I think that works best for this. And also I think it made it this one really beautiful, okay? This one I used a cotton, a soft cotton yarn for and then I did the ridging in um, a, a sporty weight yarn like this. So this is something that you need to think about, okay? I, they say that you can use scrap yarn for this. You absolutely can. And that's a great way to use scrap yarn, but you need to use scrap yarn of the same thing because I did one and tried it with scrap yarn with all kinds of different yarns. It had cotton, it had your red heart, it had your um, softer cotton. I just used all kinds of different and it did not turn well at all. It wouldn't hold a shape. Um, it was very uh, twisty and um, drooped down, even more so, as you can see on this one, it's a little bit droopy, um, but it's still holding a really good shape for this one. Um, but yeah, so you really need to keep your yarn consistent throughout this. Now, 
for these ridges here, if you're gonna use a different kind of yarn for that, which I did for these, you can do that, but it has to be a lighter weight yarn, not a heavier yarn, or either use the same yarn. If you use a heavier yarn, it's going to affect the turn of these spinners. So I hope that helps. I don't mean to go on and on, but I'm sure that a lot of people have made these and they're not getting the outcome that they would like. Uh, they're getting them and they're not staying properly. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. And that's why you really need to use the same yarn. You need to play around with yarns. And if you're really worried about the shape and you want it to look, you know, really sturdy and keep that shape perfectly, then you need to use a bulkier, not bulky like, um, I don't mean like that, but like a red heart yarn where it's got some sturdiness to it. It's kind of, you know, a harsh, you know, some of the type of yarn that you don't almost sometimes don't even want to use. That's the kind of the yarn that makes these spinners perfectly, okay? And I think uh, a cotton, which you would think would be really great because it's sturdy, is actually a little too heavy for these, okay? All right, so I'll shut up now and we'll get into it. Um, as I, uh, this, this long one, one more thing, this long one here, it's going to start off with about 100 to 120 chains. If you want a really long one, you can even go up to 150. Just realize that you're increasing, and so that makes it a lot more crocheting, okay? This one is a 75 with this thicker yarn. And this one, I believe, was a 50, okay? So I just want to show you what the sizes look and difference so that you can see. Because for the sake of the video, I'm definitely not going to do one that long. We're just, I'm just going to show you with a little thing to show you how to do it. Okay. But I wanted you to know, you know, exactly how they are. Okay. So again, all my materials and all the videos you need to make these little butterflies and all that stuff, it'll be on the description box below, but we're going to get into how to make these spinners and how to make these cute little tassels on the end with these sequins. Okay. So you can use as many different colors as you want for these. Um, but I liked uh, to keep the white pretty dominant on the inside so that it kind of uh, stood out. And so the other colors kind of when they were spinning, it looked really neat. So I'm going to keep my white in the middle. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a slip knot. And for the sake of the video, I'm just going to chain 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 19, and 20. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to cut off, which I know seems really weird because, you know, you think you would just go back, but we're actually always gonna go from one side to the next. But, um, and it really doesn't matter what's the end or what's the beginning, but if, it ne if you need the help to show you where you are, then take this first one and put a knot in it, okay? So that you know that this is this side over here. And you can make either one your end or your beginning, but this just lets you know in case it gets too curly and you don't know where you're at, that'll let you know where to and go. We're gonna bring in our yarn. I'm gonna use the same color. Like I said, you can change as you wish. And I'm going to chain one, and then into that same stitch, I'm going to put a single crochet. And I'm going to do single crochets all the way down. And when I'm doing these spinners, I like to keep my work pretty loose. I'm not um, uh, doing anything real tightly and I wanna keep my tension quite similar because that is going to affect how this um, turns and lays for you. Your tension does matter. So we've worked single crochets all the way down and we should still have 20. And now we're going to cut off again. And just pull through like that. Okay. And of course yours would be much longer. So now I'm going to still bring in my white because I'm going to do a, another row in the white. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put two double crochets in each stitch, okay? So I've chained one and in the same stitch, I'm going to put two double crochets. So one and two. And then in the next, one and two. 
and you're just gonna keep doing that all the way down. So at this point, your stitch count should have doubled. So if we had 20, now we're going to have 40. Okay, so now we're nearing the end here, all right? And we've got two stitches left. And as you're crocheting, this last one may have gotten loose, and so it doesn't even look like a stitch there, but if you pull tight, you can tell that you still have a stitch right there that you need to work into. Okay? And as you can see, it's already starting to curl, all right? So now we're going to cut off again, and now we're done with this white, and so I'm gonna pull out, and now we're going to go back to the other side again, just like we've been doing, right up here, and now I'm gonna bring in some blue yarn. So I'm just changing colors now. Okay, and then I'm gonna go right here in my first stitch, you can see it's right here. There's my chain one and there's my first stitch. So I'm gonna go right, there's my chain one and there's my first stitch. So I'm gonna go right in there. I'm gonna bring in my yarn. And so last time we um, doubled our stitches and now we're going to triple our stitches. So in each stitch, we're going to put three double crochets. So we did two in each before, which means we would have had 40. So now we're going to do this. So we're gonna go into our first stitch and we're going to put three. One, two, and three. And then we're gonna go into our next stitch and put three. One, two, and three. And just do that all the way down. Okay, so now we're ending the, um, near the end here. So we're still doing three in each one. You should end up with 120 stitches. If you don't though, it's no big deal. It's still gonna be beautiful. This isn't one that you have to really worry about counting your stitches. Uh, you do wanna try to get the exact number in each one pretty much, but you know, even then it's not the end of the world. Okay, so don't forget this last stitch here. We're gonna put our last three double crochets in there, just like that, okay? And now what you can see is we're forming our rings here. And so I'm gonna pull this out so I can show you how they go. And of course, we've got a lot of ends going on because we've had to cut off our work as we go. Okay, but basically, you're just going to curl them around like this so that they can go up and down like that, okay? So you can also, if they get a little bit too squiggly for you, use your hand to pat them down you could lay a book on them if you need to, if it comes to that, if they're getting a little too wonky, but basically that's what it looks like, okay? So what I would do is, is I would do a, another row of single crochet. You could also do another row of double crochet. You can do anything you want to, but this is the basic pattern. And you would just remember to cut off though and go back to the beginning because you don't wanna see the back side of your work coming up this way, that's the reason. So um, what you would do, okay, now if you want yours to look exactly like this one, what I did was after I did the three double crochets, I did one row of single crochet and then I'm gonna show you what I did for these right here. But I'm not gonna do the single crochet for the sake of the video. So I'm gonna cut this off, pull through, and now I'm going to bring in another color and I'm gonna start down here on this end, and I'm gonna bring in this purple, and I'm gonna show you how to do the ridges here to make it look all cool looking. So, so I'm gonna go right in here to my first stitch. I'm gonna bring in my color, just like I've been doing, do a chain one, and then I'm going to uh, chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And I'm gonna skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, and put a single crochet. Then I'm gonna chain five, two, three, four, and five. And I'm gonna skip a stitch, go into my next stitch, and put a single crochet. Now remember, when you're doing this, if you decide to do a row of single crochets around, or double crochets, whatever you decide to do, but especially if you're doing single crochets, make sure that you don't do them too tight. 
Don't do any of your stitches too tight for this, but especially if you're doing a single crochet or slip stitch or anything around here to add more color, just keep it very loose, okay? So it doesn't cause it to turn. And you wanna keep these loose as well. Three, four, and five. Skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, put a single crochet. So you would just do this all the way around and it would make that lovely looking little ridge going around here as you go. Now, another thing you can do is if you don't want one this big, if you don't want your ridges that big and that noticeable, you could do three instead of five. On this one, I did the three. Okay, so they're a little closer together. So then all you would do is instead of doing five, you would chain three, two and three, skip a stitch, go into your next and put a single crochet. So you see all that does is look a little bit smaller this one. Again, one, two, three, skip a stitch, go into your next stitch, put a single crochet. And again, one, two, three, skip a stitch, go into your next, put a single crochet. So, you know, as you can see, they just look a lot smaller than these. So it just totally depends on what you want to do. Like I said, this is a great project to follow a basic pattern on, but make it totally your own, okay? So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna go ahead and cut off now. So this video isn't like five hours long. <laughs> and I would uh, pull that out. Now, what you would normally do um, is you would start working in your ends, but I'm gonna leave these um, up here. And also, by the way, <clears throat> when you get done with this, you're going to want to leave a long string, which I, which it's okay, but I didn't do necessarily on this one, just for hanging purposes, okay? So um, when you get done with this, um, just leave a long string so that you can hang it with, all right? So, um, but I'm going to work here from my bottom. Uh, that's where my little knot is here, okay? And I'm going to show you how I did... Um, these little tassels and things on the bottom, okay? So to make a tassel, what you're gonna do, I'm gonna use the blue for this, okay? The first thing you're going to do is you're gonna make it about a foot long, okay? Going back and forth with your yarn. So I'm gonna turn my yarn just with my finger and go back the length of this foot, of the foot of yarn. Turn my work where it's going over like this and go back. Go like that go back again. And you just keep doing this till you get the thickness that you want for your tassel. So again, I'm just going back and forth till I get the thickness I want. Now remember, this is gonna be in half, so it's gonna be even thicker than what you see here. Then I'm going to cut off, and then I'm going to cut these ends here from where I turned it and I have all these ends, I'm just gonna cut them, okay? And then you're gonna take this and you're gonna fold it in half. We're gonna take our darning needle and I'm gonna go right through this end right here. Now, if you had one of the chain of fives going here, you could go through that as well. You can go through wherever you want to go through to put your tassel. But I'm going to take this small crochet hook and I'm gonna try to get it to pull through most of my stuff here, just like that. And then fold over. Just like so. Then I'm going to take a pea, I'm gonna take my yarn, it's still attached to my skein, and I'm going to go around the middle here. You can use your fingers to brush this out if you need to. So I'm gonna go right under here where I want the tassel, uh, the end of the, t the top of the tassel to close off to make that little bump right there. And I'm gonna make this as long as this, the ends of this tassel, if not longer, because we want to work it in, okay? So I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna tie so this will fall down just like that, and then I can cut it off, okay? Then I'm going to take this piece, and I'm going to start working it around my tassel here to make it thicker, okay? Okay. 
and then you can go around as many times as you want to. And normally I would probably go a lot more than that, but we're just gonna leave that as is. It's kind of hard to do on camera. <laughs> okay, and then again, I'm going to leave a pretty long piece here so that it blends in with the bottom here, okay? And I'm also gonna use these for, you can use these that you've left that are longer. You can use those for your little butterflies or anything that you wanna add to here, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece that was going around the top there, I'm gonna put it on my darning needle, and I'm going to go right through the middle of this that I was working, going around, and I'm gonna pull it out through the tassel. And that's gonna tighten that up, okay? And then we still have a piece up here where we had worked that in. You could work that in as well, but I'm gonna sew that in later. Okay, so now what we've got is we've got our tassel, and there's still some that are not cut here, so I'm just gonna go through and get those. Okay, so these two pieces I would use to hold my butterflies, and these right here I'm gonna shorten for my sequins, okay? So I want them to be pretty short, so I'm gonna cut all the way up to here just like that. Then I'm gonna grab my smaller darning needle and I'm gonna grab some of these Dollar Tree sequins and I'm gonna put them right here. Got a little side open there. And then I'm going to place the ends of my tassels here. I'm gonna put them onto my darning needle and it is smaller so it's kind of hard to get them in there but I've got it in, okay? And then I'm going to take these sequins and I'm going to place them on this piece of yarn here. So I'm gonna go right through the hole with my small darning needle and then I'm gonna pull through. Just like this. Now, I thought this worked better a lot with my smaller yarn. It's still a worsted weight yarn, but as you can see, it's not as thick as this. It's that, uh, like the Baby Soft or the, I think this was Lion Brand, something like that. So it's a smaller yarn. So you might wanna make your tassel out of that if you wanna use your sequins. This kind of distorted the sequin a little bit, but I can still flatten it out. Okay, and then you just take another one and you would go through again. And it does, like I said, it works much better with a lighter yarn to get through, okay? But then I would um, space them out accordingly. So I would have two and then I would put another one and another one and another one and another one till it went all the way down the piece of the yarn. So you get the drift and that's how I got these um, to do this like that. And they stay put. If you want to, you can put a little, um, put a little knot in the end if you wish to, but they really don't go anywhere. They stay right on the yarn. Okay, and then all I would do is I would take whatever I made um, if you want to make hearts or butterflies or whatever you want to make. And then I would use this to sew on to the piece. So for instance, if you made one of these little butterflies or flowers, whatever you want to call them, I would put this long piece onto my darning needle. And then I would go right through the middle here. pull down because you still want this to be long and then I would knot it right here at the very top so that when I cut it it looks like antenna anyway okay so I'm going to knot that again Sorry. 
So I've knotted again, and then I'm just gonna cut this off right there where it just looks like a little antenna. And if you wanna bring in some more, you can, okay? And so then that's what it would look like. These sequins would be on a here, and then this would hang, and then this would be from the top. You can make a little loop and they just turn out lovely. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you need any help, don't hesitate to ask. You can find me on uh, TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook. I have a Gmail, and of course, you can comment right here on YouTube. I really appreciate all your support, guys. I hope you're well and safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy crocheting. Bye-bye.